Well, hello, and welcome to Beyond the Sermon, a Bethany podcast where we have the privilege of digging deeper into our Sunday messages. I am Tammy DeLau, and today I'm joined with Pastor David Baxley and Pastor Steve Musto. All right, guys, we're going to do a flyover. We're going to talk about what we've talked about for the last couple of weeks. Awesome. Okay? Let's do it. So we have the law because of the garden, because of our sin. We have the law, and it gives us rest. We have the law, and we see that we serve a holy God. Yep. And last week we talked about we have the law and it helps us to love our God. That's it. Okay. I want to dive in, but I want to dive in specifically talking about rust. Okay. Okay. Let's come back. Does that feel okay? Let's do it. Okay. All right. Here we go. Okay. So rust. Mm -hmm. I am feeling like when I talk to some people, I think David, you would agree this whole, the law gives us rest yeah. is a new mm -hmm. concept. Mm -hmm. I think some people still think it means they get to take a nap. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm serious. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what are you guys well, running it across It does, that? but it's not limited to that. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. You are free okay. to take a nap. I don't think you need the law to tell you to take a nap. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. So this is hard. This is a little, little obtuse for us. Mm -hmm. I liken it to this. Um, all right. Think about it. Let's think about it in terms of being a little kid and you're a little kid and you, you're scared and you go running into mom and dad's room and you jump up into their bed and they say, just, it's okay. It's okay. You don't have to be scared. Sleep with us. And you get the best sleep you can possibly imagine because yeah. nothing can hurt you. Yeah. But mom and dad do not. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. Like the one hey, there's apparently a parallel just triggered there a wound for Tammy. <laughs> well, yeah, I would think. Oh. Yeah. Between our two kids, Hannah is like a little space heater still to this day. Okay. She just like emanates. You can almost hear the wow, wow, wow. wow. <laughs> the warmth coming, warm coming off of her. Warmth coming off of her. And then, uh, yeah, Josh would just, whoop, Josh would move around. Okay. Um, all the time. Uh, okay. And that's what he who he was. That's what he did. Yeah. And so uh, we couldn't get him to rest. So yes, we did not get a good night's sleep, mm -hmm. um, but uh, the kids mm -hmm. did. Yeah. So when we rest, we are resting in the arms of our God. Well, how do we do that? Well, we are in relationship with him. So the law is not created to push us away or to make God more distant. It's, it's created to bring us closer in. We only really achieve uh, true rest, that peace mm -hmm. when we are with God, when we are where uh, we need to be with him, resting fully in him. Mm -hmm. I think one of the reasons why it can feel confusing as uh, well, maybe another way of wording it is restored rest for the soul. And we, uh, I think in our modern culture, I do this when I'm tired, I think of what I physically need to do. We, 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 we instinctively always look for physical solutions yeah. for what's actually a spiritual problem. Mm. And I think that's why it can feel confusing because we think of rest as a physical, ultimately a physical solution or something that has to be physically resolved. And whereas we're coming back to this, we're remembering that um, the physical is secondary. There's a spiritual thing that the law is actually seeking to do. There's a spiritual thing that God wants to do. So restored, re restored rest for the soul and the peace in that relationship with God will then overflow to the physical and I think that's why it feels confusing okay. sometimes. Yeah. So I think that's good. I think it's good that we touched on that. Yeah. So the first week we just talked about why the law. Then we spent two whole weeks in only four commandments. And you are going to spend one week in six commandments, correct? I am. So, so we're flying. <laughs> that's, we're, the plan. Look, that's the that's plan. plan. Okay, <laughs> that's the plan. So those first four, um, you ended last week telling us that we, there was, we need to love God. And that he is a holy God. And so a question that, that I have for you is I notice when you are reading scripture and when my Bible says God, a lot of times you say Yahweh. Oh, the Lord. Can, yeah, 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 Lord. Lord. I'm sorry, it's the Lord. Lord. Yeah. It's yeah. the Lord. I'm sorry. I yeah. did that wrong. Why? Yeah. I just, I'm curious why, why you do that. So our Bibles, our English Bibles, um, when you see the, um, the Lord and it's in kind of like lowercase capitals. It's mm -hmm. all capital letters, but they're kind yeah. of lowercase. Mm -hmm. That is um, God's formal name. Okay. That's Yahweh. Now we say Yahweh, we actually, there, there are no vowels in Hebrew. 
So we don't actually know if we're pronouncing it right. We think we are. Um, part of the reason why we don't know uh, if we're pronouncing it right is because it went unpronounced for so very long. Mm. And there was a tradition in uh, Jewish culture, still is, of not pronouncing God's name ever. Um, so they would just say the name. They still, to this day, might just say the name. Was that a sign of reverence and respect to who God is? I think in many cases, it was an attempt at that. Okay. It, in some cases, has become a legalistic rule. So here's the deal. God never said, don't use my name, ever. He said, don't misuse my name. And what did we talk about this past week? We said, when something's really important, like new carpeting or a new car or whatever it is, we put a rule around it. Mm -hmm. And we say, well, here's, here, here are the hedges. Here are the things you can't do. So we, this really important thing, God's name is really important and it's, and it's holy. We need to treat it like that. Uh, we put a rule around and said, now we can't, we're not allowed to, no one's allowed to pronounce the name. God never said that. Never said that. So we've, we've created a rule to try to obey something that um, God never intended us to, to do. What he wants us to do, it's, it's, it's easy, really easy to just create a rule and stay away from that thing entirely. What's much harder is to um, walk in the tension of that thing. So I use this example, uh, you know, all the time when we're talking about laws or rules or whatever. I grew up in a very Christian kind of culture. And in that Christian culture, one of the things that we were taught was that alcohol is wrong. Okay. No one ever explained why or what we're supposed to do with it or what. I, I just was stay away from it. It's wrong. It's bad. It's, and it was on a list of a lot of things, but alcohol is one of the, one of the things. This is bad. This is wrong. Uh, so when we um, got older and we, st we went into the world where alcohol is normal, it was like, well, alcohol's wrong. And then people were like, well, why? I don't know. I don't know. I had to learn how to function in a world, in the business world, what, you know, whatever, in a world where alcohol is surrounding me, which is much harder to do than just saying we ban this substance from our minds, thoughts, homes, functions, whatever, so it, we never deal with it. Much harder to walk around in a world where it exists. And I think the same is true with just about anything when it comes to the Bible. Certainly true with God's name. It's easier just to say, well, we just never use the name. Much harder to say, we use the name, but we use it well and we use it correctly. Aren't you coming back to that tension that really was a big part of last week, which is, and you summarize it, Tammy, it's, it's about loving God. Mm -hmm. It's not about following the rule. And this whole example is we skipped the loving God part and we got yeah. to a rule mm -hmm. because we're, we're not in a place of lovingly fearing God. We're in a place of, of not wanting to get punished and break a rule. Right. And, and when love's not a part of that narrative, we're never going to understand the rule. We're never going to understand the law. We're, we're not even understanding God and mm -hmm. our relationship with him. And I think that's, that's a, a great example of how often we do that with so many, like you said, the list was, was long. And so yeah. when we come back to love, which is complicated, we're gonna, you're going to talk about that more this week. It loves this complicated idea yeah. that's mixed with a lot of different ideas, mm -hmm. but it's why I think we add to the rules because it's harder to understand loving God. So we go with the simple, but God's like, no, get into this with me. Cause this is where you're really going to know rest when we learn how to love God. So the first four were about loving God or were are primarily about that vertical relationship. Yeah. The next are going to be about the horizontal relationship. Yeah. Should I just go ahead and read those real quick so sure. that we know yeah, they're all it. right. So we will be in Exodus. These are the short ones. These are yeah. the short ones. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We're going to be in Exodus 20. Honor your father and mother so that you may have a long life in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony against your neighbor. Do not covet your neighbor's house. Do not covet your neighbor's wife, his male or female servant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Okay, so is there a significance that the first four were about this relationship, the vertical relationship between man and God, 
And the next six are about that horizontal relationship between man and man. Is there a significance there? We, uh, there's a significance in the breakdown mm -hmm. that the, the primary, the initial, the first thing that we do is we get our relationship with God correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that mm -hmm. the, the next group are all about mm -hmm. dealing with people. There's significance mm -hmm. there. And one really does need to come before the other. Yes. It, it kind of feels mm -hmm. like the Beatitudes, like yeah. blessed are the poor in spirit. That has to happen first. Right. Okay. There is no significance as far as I'm concerned in the number Okay. of them. So there's four that talk about God and there's six that talk about people. Well, that must mean that people, you know, this is more important to God than no, that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. um, well, you can kind a, it's of, it's not a mathematical uh, equation. Kind of five. You can almost attribute to God. Cause if you're honoring your heavenly father, so you could do five and five. Then. I, I, I guess <laughs> you could make <laughs> that. To, I know. <laughs> I'm teasing. Five well. is a really good bridge though. Honoring your father and mother, because it is the primary. So after God, there's an order to this yeah. mm -hmm. after God, who is your authority? I mean, who's the, your authority on, on your earth? Who's, it's your mother and father. Yeah. It's the primary relationship. We got to mm -hmm. get this right. And it's the thing we talk about. Actually, um, uh, one of the things that as I've been studying uh, each of these, one of the things that um, occurred to me was parents are uh, not in danger most of the time of not honoring, loving, cherishing their children. We, we do that to a fault. There are times we need to back off. Mm -hmm. But kids, we, most of us go through a time where we don't want help. We don't want to, we kind of want to push our parents away. Uh, we're honoring is hard. It's easy for us to honor our kids throughout our entire life. Mm -hmm. It's harder for kids to honor their parents throughout their entire life. It's interesting that, uh, yeah, there's nothing in this about honor your children. Yep. Or love your children or anything like that. Is that like not important to God? It's, it's all, it's about the parents. Mm -hmm. Although I, I agree with you, I don't think the uh, amount of numbers is, is, is an overly significant thing, but it reminds me personally that in the truest, purest sense of the word it is easier to love God because God can't do me wrong, mm. but it's harder to love people because they will do me wrong. Yeah. I, but you're from the standpoint, I agree with you from yeah. the standpoint of a mature Christian. I think there are a lot of people out there who wonder whether God will do them wrong. Can mm, I trust? Yeah, God? that's true. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So theoretically, yes. Yeah. That's a good. And for yeah, some, I think it's easier to be mad at God because it's harder to be mad at someone who's sitting next to you. Yeah. You can, you can fake it. Well, yeah. ultimately God allows all the things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was reading this, um, this morning, someone's story. Uh, about losing a child um, mm -hmm. and they lost an adult child. And as I was reading that, um, I just, you know, in my mind, I always I, thinking about that and thinking through the, you know, what does that look like? What does that feel like? And it, you're, you're right away, no matter what the kid was doing when they lost their lives, even if it was irresponsible, we, we go to, well, what about God? God, why are you doing this? God, why are you allowing this? So God gets a lot of the mm -hmm. um, backlash. Yeah. Backlash, mm -hmm. blame, whatever for, yeah. for these things, because ultimately he is in control of all things. And there are things that are, that are allowed mm -hmm. and we don't understand. We want the answer as to why they would be allowed. I feel like when you were going through it, we did have some vocabulary words Mm. Um, one word that necessarily wouldn't be a vocabulary word, but you did bring it up. And as I was studying this week, it kept hitting me. You said you were going to use the word arrogant a lot. Mm. And so the fact that all of these, the, the six that you're going to look at this week have to do with relationships. Yeah. And if we disobey them, we're being arrogant. We're being yeah. arrogant. If we don't honor our father and mother, I'm being arrogant. If I covet my neighbor's things. Yeah. So when we start talking about some of the big issues in the law mm -hmm. that we, we struggle through, um, things like gender, uh, sexuality, divorce, remarriage, men and women, those kind of things. Um, and we're going to talk about those in, in a couple of weeks. Um, it, that's really where we're going to see arrogance. Mm -hmm. 
okay. come out because a lot of it has to do with our arrogance about the culture and the Bible and what it says and how it says it. And well, I wouldn't say it that way. And how come you use it? So some of it's that, but you're right is this is about the, the, all of these things are about being so self-focused mm -hmm. that we stop um, thinking about anybody else or thinking about their good. And God wants us focused Ten commandments tell us that God wants us focused like a laser on him and also on other people. Mm -hmm. Let God take care of, of us. That doesn't mean we let people treat us like a doormat. That doesn't mean like we, uh, you know, burn ourselves out for other people that we, we, we give ourselves to the point of injury to others or anything like that. that's not what that means. It, it means that we are more others focused than we are us focused. You know, there's something interesting, like even now as we're talking, what are we doing? We are, we are creating a distinction in the law between these two components. And I'm reminded though, if we jump ahead to the New Testament in first John, uh, John says, if anyone says I love God, but hates his brother, he's a liar. Yeah. And he says, you can't say I love God and not love someone else. And so, whereas he's trying to say, quit trying to make this separation. Quit trying to say, well, I've got this one done. I'll do this one next. Or I can't really do this one well, but at least I'm doing this one. And God's like, the, the two are so interconnected that quit trying to separate the two. You just love. You love God and love people. Love, don't. I'm going to work on it, 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 it. I just like we naturally create these categories that God's like trying, almost trying to. These are the primary 10 that represent the totality of the law because they are always interconnected. Yeah. Don't separate the two. Quit separating the two. I wonder. Okay, well, now I want to separate one of them. <laughs> so a lot of us come from dysfunctional homes. I know yeah. that many people that you shepherd. Yeah. And how do you honor your father and mother mm. when mom and daddy are not honorable in any way, shape, or form? What yeah. does that, how do we do that? I know that's a really hard one. And yeah, we probably no, could spend the rest it, of our time talking about this. It things. is hard mm -hmm. because, again, we are going to look for rules. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're going to look for what does this mean? So, um, you know, uh, dad is, uh, you know, violent or the, to me throughout my life, but now he's elderly. Do I allow him to come in and live with us in, in our home? Is that what honoring? We're looking for a rule mm -hmm. because it's easier. Here's what's harder. Harder is I sit before the Lord, palms open physically and mentally and say, God, I will do whatever brings you honor. I will do whatever is best for my relationship with you and for my father and for my family that I am responsible for. What is the best thing? Sometimes there's a cultural expectation, a lot of cultures, there's a cultural expectation of what honoring your parents looks like. And that takes precedence over what God tells us. That's not right. So if, if we look at what is one of the first things Jesus does, Matthew 5 through 7, Sermon on the Mount, is an unpacking of a lot of the commands of 5 through 10. Mm -hmm. And what does Jesus do? You've heard that this was said, but here's what I'm telling you. Well, and it seems like he almost makes it harder. It's about the thing behind the thing. It's about the thing behind the rule. What's behind it? Mm -hmm. So it is possible for one family to say, that I'm, we're going to invite mom or dad or whoever to come in and be a part of our lives and, and um, you know, live with us and we're going to care for them. And for another family in the exact same situation uh, to hear something different from the Lord and to say, we're not going to allow that. And for this, this reason, that reason, and for both of them to be right. For both of them to be in the will of God. Correct. Because what we're looking for is the rule that applies to the situation. But that's not what this is. It, that's not what any of the Christian life is. What God wants from us is to look to him and to walk with him. He wants us constantly in a state of, God, what do I do about this? What do I do? What do I say? How do I, how do, I do this? I, you know, I, well, I think the three of us have this happen to us fairly regularly where we're sitting talking with someone 
and we're praying, God, I don't know what to say in response. So often, Steve. God, I don't know what I'm supposed to say to this person. I don't know what I have to offer. Mm-hmm. I don't, you know, I'm fresh out of pastor pixie dust to sprinkle on this. What do I do? And when we become competent, we stop listening to the Lord about that. I'm, I'm, I am less likely, this is going to sound weird. I'm less likely, the, the, the more I grew as a teacher, the less likely I became to, in the moment while I was teaching, be saying, God, am I saying what you want me to say? God, is this, should, should I say this? Should I say that? Just to, to be turning to him. And, and the more I was competent in myself and my own gifts, my own talents and my own, that's not the way we're supposed to live our lives. So as you're saying that, I'm thinking that the more we become competent, the less we're resting in God then too. Yeah. So and it, no wonder we, uh, we burn out. Mm-hmm. You know, as I think of the word honor and that being this, the centrality of this command and what you're saying about needing to hear God, part of coming to God to hear him begins also with being honest with God about the real condition of my heart. Yes. God, I'm wondering whether I should bring my mom and dad in my home. Yeah. I'm telling you, I'm angry. My dad, I don't like, my dad was bad. Mm. My dad was wrong. I, I'm angry with that. Yeah. I, and so I don't know if I truthfully, God, I don't want him here. Mm. Before I ask you, I'm just going to admit. And I, we don't do that to start with. And that's such an important part yeah. of wrestling to hear God is getting honest with God. To allow, he already knows, right. but in our communication with him, getting honest, here's where I'm really at. Yeah. God here. So I need to hear you say where I'm really at to do a work in me to heal that. So I can really hear your voice lead me in that process. And because we want to rule, we don't have to, we, we go to a rule to not have to deal with our hearts, yeah. to not have to confront those things. This is all. And this goes back so good, David, because it goes back to the idea of loving God and the idea of really being in intimate relationship with him. Cause you're right. We don't say those things. Why don't we say those things? Cause we're not supposed to, we think we're not supposed to politeness or whatever. We, it, we, we don't have a raw, real, open relationship with God. God, you know what's going on in my heart. You know what's going on in my mind. You know the things that I'm thinking about. You know that my fantasies are, are going, spinning off into. You know I, how I'm comforting myself right now. You know what the, the condition of my heart when I see this person is. You know all these things. I, and, and we feel like we can't really say that to God, or we're not willing to admit it to ourselves that we're really experiencing that. And and part of that then is if we come to God with a belief, an idea that I am probably not really aware of the fullness of the darkness of my own heart, as I'm coming to seek his will and direction, then I start with God, show me the darkness of my heart. Mm. And then as he shows, then I confess those darkness, things in my heart. Then now I'm ready to say, now God change my heart and now lead me and where you want to go, like there's this progression and it's messier, it's longer, it's more complicated. And I, rarely do I want to start with God, what do you want to change in me before I hear what you want me to do? Yeah. And God's like, I, I can't lead you here. Well, if we're not willing to talk about what's going on in you first. Yeah. Okay. And I, I pray this isn't a curveball. So <laughs> yes, totally. We need to be dependent on the Lord and asking him what we need to do. But now we know we are brothers and sisters with people and we see a sister who under the guise of, I am honoring my father and mother who is literally being taken advantage and beat up. How do we come alongside and walk? Does that, does that question make, cause that happens too. Like, how do we, how do yeah. we do that? How do. One of the. I want to come to a thought that first popped in my head and okay. I'm not going to say this out loud to those situations necessarily mm-hmm. every time. Okay. But one of the things that I realize if I'm walking like Jesus, sometimes Jesus asks me to be taken advantage of for his kingdom yes. and his glory. Okay. And so I think sometimes we make rules that aren't God rules and, and we insert that into a situation. I'm like, well, look, that person clearly is being a doormat is being a doormat. Mm-hmm. Clearly God would never want someone to be a doormat. So therefore it must be wrong. Right. And because I, I be careful how I say this because, because I don't want to come up because this is also a, a line of reason that can get used to empower abuse in a very Amen. dysfunctional way. Yes. So I want to acknowledge that, be careful. Yeah. but, but we have to be careful looking in mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. But we don't always assume something's outside of God's will yeah. because we're uncomfortable with the suffering someone might be enduring. Right. Sometimes God says, if, if <laughs> Jesus endured major suffering yeah. that was sinful against him in accordance to God's will to accomplish his glory, we are not outside of that exception of the way we're going to end up having to live our lives sometimes. Okay. It's, it's, it's Jesus saying to Peter when Peter says, I, you want me to be the leader? What about this? What about John? Oh, that's and, right. Yes. And Jesus saying, <laughs> I, what is that to you? His, <laughs> the plan for his life is not the plan for your life. I'm giving you a mission. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. go do this. And that's the plan. In a similar way, there are times when we have to be able to say, hey, look, maybe God has called them to this, this thing. So it doesn't mean we don't bring it up. Right. Okay. That's exactly right. But we don't bring it up in a confrontational or a you're sinning way because that's not the way that I would do it or that's not the way that, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think you should. Maybe God, is call, maybe God is allowing you to see it so you can draw alongside them, support them, love them, help them. Hey, how do I help you? If, the, if, you're, called to, if you're called to carry this cross, how do I, as your sister, can I you? come alongside you and help you okay. carry it? Uh, so, yeah, but that's a great question because we are responsible for each other. Mm-hmm. Yes. When there's sin in each other's life or when there's something going on that, you know, shouldn't be, we are responsible to have the conversation. Mm-hmm. It's not always a confrontation. It's not always a negative thing. Sometimes just, you know, I'm calling you to something higher. So the answer then is similar, just like if you're the person, you're being honest with the Lord and you're saying, would you have me do this? If we see a situation, the first thing we need to do is sit down before the Lord and say, what conversation am I supposed to Absolutely have? Absolutely so, right. Okay. So yes. what we're, the theme of this is prayer. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, it's prayer, but I think it's, it's, it's the slowing down. Don't assume I get it mm-hmm. yeah. because of a rule that I formed or I think a rule God has. Yeah. I slow down to say, I want to know the heart of God in this Mm -hmm. and the, and God give me eyes to see what you're doing in my life or someone else's. So I don't see a rule. I see the heart of God. Mm -hmm. And then I come alongside the work God is doing instead of the work David wants to make a rule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the, the 10 commandments are not an exhaustive piece of these are the rules that, that we have. Yeah. So David and I were talking a little while ago and I said, here's one of the challenges I'm, I'm facing in the message. It's like, hey, you're my friend. I'm not going to murder you. Mm-hmm. Isn't yeah. that nice? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a low bar, don't we? Mm-hmm. And if that is the low bar, I'm not sure I want that to be the friendship standard. <laughs> I know. Like, I, in order for me to, to really love you guys, you know, we're not going to sleep with each other's spouses. We're, we're not going to steal stuff out of each other's offices. Uh, mm-hmm. We're uh, not going to kill each other. That means stay away from my chocolate, David. <laughs> it doesn't say that there specifically, um, I, th- th- there, but you also are supposed to give to those in need. I know. That's so, it. That is true. That and, and listen okay. to me. Thank you, Steve. Okay. <laughs> there, there, sometimes there's no greater need okay. than that chocolate in the <laughs> afternoons. That is true. <laughs> but again, what God wants from, from us is for us to reflect Mm-hmm. on how do I live this out? So this is what Jesus was doing in the Sermon on the Mount mm-hmm. when he said, look, you guys are following, do not murder each other. Mm-hmm. But that's not, that's not, it, there's, it's not like, well, you can beat somebody senseless, mm-hmm. but uh, just not kill them. Mm-hmm. You know, as long as they still are on life support, then it's okay. That's not the law. Mm-hmm. Jesus said, what's the heart behind it? The heart behind it is when you, when you hate someone, mm-hmm. when you're like, you fool, mm-hmm. you idiot. And when you feel that way about them, you walk around feeling Just that way about them. Just your heart towards them. Just yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. That's, that's really the heart of the law mm-hmm. of, of what this rule, this commandment is. Mm-hmm. And so live that. But again, it's all about being reflective every day practitioners of the gospel saying, how do I respond in this situation to this person? Given what I know, here's the, here's the, the pasture I have to live in. There are mm-hmm. fences, but how do I live it out in a way that honors the Lord? So all of these laws do apply to all. I mean, it's so easy to think a certain mm-hmm. one I'm not struggling with. But. Yeah. You know, we, we talked about a week one, how there's 600 plus commands. Mm-hmm. And now we're in the Ten Commandments, and you know, you just made that statement. We recognize it's not the exhaustive list. Mm-hmm. 
as we have been walking this series, as we, as I've reflected on some of those other commands, we're going to get to some of the more weird ones and complicated ones. And um, because we're so rule driven, we just look, why that rule? Mm-hmm. Do, what am I supposed to do with that rule? Instead, I wonder if, if, and it's what I've been doing and it helps me is every time I come to a rule, what is the heart of God in that? Yeah. What is the heart? What, is, what does God want me to know about him and how I love him? And then how does it impact how I love someone else? If I'm willing to, every time I run across a rule uh, in the Bible or maybe one that I've, that's formed in my life, how does this, what does this tell me about how to love God? And what does this tell me about how to love others? It just shifts the way we, then the 10 commandments don't become a list of do's and don'ts. Yeah. They, they become the beginning of a conversation with God throughout the entire word of God, old and new Testament of God. Show me what you want to show me about how to love you and how to love others. Yeah. That's what Jesus was getting at Mm -hmm. in the new Testament. You know, David, I'm glad you said that because, um, the 10 commandments I've, I've had a lot of people in my office who've broken a lot of the 10 commandments, but I've never had someone come in who's, who's, uh, confessed to coveting never once. I'm, I'm, I'm a coveter. I'm, I'm a serial coveter. I'm having a hard time with coveting. Never. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, I am a serial coveter. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. <laughs> it's, uh, this, it's very interesting to me mm-hmm. that this makes the top 10 list. Yeah, that's good. Because it seems like a victimless crime. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we, we see the new car drive through our neighborhood or you know, whatever the deal is, somebody gets a new lawnmower. I don't know what, what, what your thing is, but we, we see it and we, I, I want that. Why can't I have that? What? Isn't it interesting that that makes the top 10 list. And I think what you're saying, David, is important because if we don't reflect on our own hearts and we don't um, constantly, constantly, mm-hmm. even throughout the day, multiple times a day, say what's going on in me in this moment, what's going on right now. We don't do that. That little bit of, I wish I had that. How come they get to have that? I I want one of those is going to lead to some of these other things that are going to impact um, our, our relationships. But more than that, if I want what you have, I can never be relationally intimate with you. We're always, there's always going to be a competition. You may not even know it, but there's always going to be a wall between us. There's always going to be this thing. It's like, yeah, but yeah, but you have, yeah, but your marriage is, and mine is, but you, your paycheck is, and mine is your house is, and mine is, and there's always going to be a relational block between us. And God says, that is not how I want my people to live. But not only that, it creates a relational block between us and God. Yes. And it, cause why can't I have it? Yes. That's exactly. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, that's why aren't so, you good enough to give it to me? Mm-hmm. So I know, is it significant then that the last one is thou shalt not covet because with coveting murder could come from that with coveting stealing can come from that with coveting talking bad about someone else. Adultery, is, adultery, adultery. adultery. Yeah. So yeah. is there significance that, that you shall have no other God before me? Yeah. And thou shalt not covet. Don't covet your neighbor's stuff and don't cover his, covet, covet your neighbor's spouse. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I think that is the, that's the clue. Okay. That yes, that's exactly what can happen if okay. we're not careful. I won't be here to hear your sermon, but I will listen to it. I'm yeah. excited. To, yeah. you, you may be so much the better. We'll <laughs> <see>. <laughs> I will, I will for sure. Thank you guys. This is so fun. And thank you for joining us. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.